Man, I, 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 you know, I actually read the chapter like a couple times because I find for myself, like if I just try to like read it and then like take notes on it and prep it, it's, it's a mess. But this was challenging for me, man. Like, um, I mean, tough one. yeah, well, actually, so are we ready to roll? I'm sorry. I, I know it's. Yeah, like, let's, yeah. let's go for it. I don't even I mean, know if I'll use the it. whole hour, but um, let me at least um, just show you <clears throat> like what I came up with. Um so um i didn't really do i mean like all of the exercises okay yeah all right um sorry one second Get this out of the way can y'all see this now is that okay yeah it's good okay um yeah so i, I mean i didn't I, I got into some conceptual sort of exercises and questions um and i you know cribbed some stuff from actually um this was one where and I, I'll, I'll talk more about it. I have, uh, I don't know if y'all have this, but it's, um, there's some, like, actually, let me just put it in the chat, but somebody, I don't know, at some point did a really nice job to, um, trying to put it in the chat. Um, yeah, so, like, th this person... I don't, I don't know if this was, maybe this was just one of the um, previous cohorts, but yeah, there's some interesting kind of like notes and questions in this person's um, thing. So yeah, anyway, um, yeah, so let me talk about environments and like where I understood stuff and, you know, where I didn't understand it so much, um, you know, what are the basic properties, what are the, you know, what, you know how do we... Um, how do you, you know, manipulate functions in, in, in R in a way that allows it to kind of work with different environments? Um, you know, there are special purpose environments, which that was probably one of my harder issues to understand. Uh, and then caller environment, and then uh, three places where, um, you know, this is the end. I won't be getting into these last few um, today, but, to, but next week. So um, one of the things that kind of keeps coming up over and over again when you read about environments is that it drives scoping, right? And um, actually one of the um, previous cohort, I think this was like you know, um, the, the first cohort actually. So we already, um, this was an, actually an interesting thing from the previous chapter, which uh, Ron, I believe you did, um, but yeah. is that right? Yeah, so this idea of name masking, so names defined inside a function, mask names outside the function, can't be found, it goes up, so that's, you know, we're, we're sort of, that's, you know, even, even I, the, the, the less uh, computationally, like, sophisticated person, remember that from, you know, my early um, R classes, you know, this idea of going up one level to the, to the parent, if, if need be. Um, if you uh, functions versus variables, if you use a, a name and a function call, objects that are not functions get ignored. Kind of makes sense. Um, and then every time a, a function is called, a new environment is created, which is interesting. Um, yeah, and then also a dynamic lookup only looks at value when it needs to, well, it's AKA when the, when the function is run. So um, yeah, so what are some other things? Like, so one of the other kind of things that we hear about in, in, in the chapter is in addition to this idea of scoping being you know important to the concept of environments is um, that a lot of things about environments are just like named lists with, you know, with a couple of exep uh, exceptions, uh, it must be unique, the name, the names in the environment are not ordered, um, which, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I guess that was a little confusing to me. An environment has environment has a parent, except for some, one that we'll talk about later. And then environments are not copied um, when modified, right? So, um, and that I believe is this sort of what's called reference semantics, I believe, or referential, something, something like that. So um, anyway, the way we can create, you know, uh, also one important thing for this particular chapter, the Rlang package is sort of seminal for a lot of these. So to use this ENV to create an environment, um, you know, we would just uh, use ENV and open and close brackets um, or, or parentheses. And each of these is a, name and value pairing 
right? So um, we have A, B, C, D are the names and then various output. Some are numerical, some are integers, you know, or some are, some are logical, some are, you know, uh, numeric, whatever. Um, and if we just call the environment itself, it just gives us this sort of um, non-useful identifying uh, information for E1. Um, but if we use from the Arlang package, this env underscore print function, it gives us a lot more cool stuff. It gives us that same ID thing. And then it says, um, it tells us what the parent is, which I'll get into more in a second. And then it tells us what, you know, the, the, what each name is bound to in terms of the, the nature of it, right? So we have logicals, we have, you know, K, um, we have um, character string, we have double, and we have integer. So, yeah, and then also we can also just look at the name. So these were all sort of interesting. Um, I'll be honest, like the, probably, none, if I have like one frustration with this chapter, and maybe this is just me not getting stuff because I don't have, like, unlike Ron, I don't have like a tremendous, um, computer science background I mean I, I mean everything I know about you know programming is through R um you know so it's uh I guess what would have been helpful maybe and maybe I'm just missing this but more and to, to get more information about um why we would want to have you know like you know like why multiple environments are important does anyone else feel that way I mean okay so like it's interesting so like a function you know we call a function that creates a new environment, you know, but I, don't, I I just had a hard time figuring out like why I should care. Does anyone else have that feeling at all? Maybe not Ron, because you already are programming in a bunch of other languages, but I don't know if Colin, you had that feeling at all? Well, I think, I think coming at it from like, like a, like a package development kind of perspective of it, or like mm -hmm. using packages in general, like environments are really important because it allows us to like keep specific objects and named objects separated from each other right so right like if you have a specific like if you have a specific if you have a specific like object in your environment called name that's not going to clash with the function named me right in like the base package and so mm -hmm. you know environments kind of have that like it's important to kind of keep things separated so there's not like those name clashes with different objects the way i understood it yeah um yeah, i think i think that's good but i think also too like what's really important about this as well is just like going back to like the first paragraph and and you know don't you know don't beat yourself up with it because it's like it starts off by basically saying like Hey, environments are what works on the back end, but you really need to know how to use it day to day. <laughs> Not really. So it's it's a nice to know, but you know, don't don't beat yourself up if it's like hard to understand because you don't deal with this every day, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely it's something I want to understand too, I guess, is and I and I have dealt with like, you know, environments just in in little ways and making functions and stuff. So I've had, you know, just but I think, you know, obviously the reason for for doing this book and doing this group is. You know, understanding you know why it's important um i guess i guess where my consternation comes with this chapter is just like hey this is great to know and like yeah. i understand like why it's like i understand components of why it's important but i'm just like where is this useful you know what i mean exactly like, that's what i'm trying to say yeah exactly yeah um and i guess you know if they made it if he made it, i can see why he didn't you know write it a different way because if you do just a bunch of sort of like this is why this is useful then you're only sort of spelling out cases that are useful in that book, you know, or in the, in the, in the way that you wrote it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, by, by being kind of vague and kind of more abstract with it, you're, you're sort of leaving it up to the reader to understand, you know, what might be, you know, possible. Maybe. And I don't want to hide, I don't want to hijack the conversation either, but I also like, I also, I also think like learning these like component parts are going to be important when we move on to the next like sections of the book sure i had i had that thought of like okay why do i need to know environments well i think it's going to become very important especially when we start talking about s3 r6 s4 yeah um, so it's like you have to know these like component parts before we can talk more about those advanced topics so yeah i think 
I th- you know, it may seem like really abstract and why do I need to know this, but it might all be revealed to us later in the book, you know. I mean, I, I can think of a couple of things. One is, it's to me, it is an interesting thing to understand how environments are a concept in other languages as well. So this helps bridge R to like Scheme or Lisp mm-hmm. or uh, Python, which has this concept as well. I think R is cool and has this R lang package. You can actually get in there and manipulate it in a little more detail than maybe you can in other languages, which is kind of fun. But um, as far as, and it also helps because some of some of the features of R are built on these environments. And if things go wrong with those features, it can help you. Oh, wait a minute! I've heard this before. I, I know what an environment is. I may not be familiar with it enough that I use it all the time, but at least now you'll be exposed to it and won't be a completely foreign concept. You can find this book and look it up. That particular um, thing, what the heck's going on, or just you know help in R. Yeah. So I think that's helpful. And the other thing is that super assignment thing. It's that I don't know how you'd know what to do with that if you didn't know what environments were, maybe. But sure, yeah. And I, you know, the thing is, is and actually after I, I, it's funny I have you, used that before. I, you have used it. Yeah. Yeah, I have two, um, but only when I was like cribbing somebody else's like function solution for something. You know what I mean? And so I probably yeah. didn't fully understand it. And um, yeah, no, that's, that's a great point of you know why we would want to do that anyway but it, um, it is yeah. an advanced topic i mean that's it is advanced yes. art, so it is an advanced topic so it's not like you could definitely get away you have gotten away with and will continue to get away with not really thinking about environments very much through most of you <laughs> well yeah like you say i mean it will probably become a lot more sort of evident yeah. once we get into the deeper things with different like right but like colin was models. saying that's true yeah. too yeah well anyway just that's, my, that's my two cents yeah yeah no i appreciate that i appreciate it a um, couple other things, just um, this was from one of the, the previous cohorts, like, so the working environment is the environment wh- whose names are currently, uh, would, would currently mask names in any other environment, right? So like, um, to your point, Colin, about, you know, well, I guess we wouldn't want, well, I guess if you had a working environment, the the the, the word mean would already be, would be, would be in the current environment, but it would be populated from, you know, loading. Well, actually, no, you wouldn't have to load it because it'd be base R, but um so anyway so yeah the, the, we don't use the term um working environments we use current environment that was something that somebody pointed out i thought that was interesting in a previous set of notes um oh and then if uh you're experience, experimenting interactively which is you know basically what i'm doing right now um the current environment is um uh, the global environment, right? So if you see here on the bottom, I, I ran current underscore ENV. And um, so my current environment is our global ENV. They won't see that. Um, I don't know, like, I, I didn't try this actually, but what, what happens when we just, that's weird. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you run the function global underscore ENV, you just get the, the name of the environment. So um, yeah. Oh yeah. And then one thing, um only one environment doesn't have a parent that's the empty environment which um um yeah i had a hard time figuring out why i would care about that but let's yeah so let's talk about this this idea of super assignment right so uh regular assignment you know we create a variable in um the current environment that's you know certainly not um surprising at all but um what super assignment does that's different than regular assignment is it 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 never creates an environment it instead modifies an existing environment found in the parent environment right um but in, and if it um then then Hadley goes on to note if it doesn't exist it will create one but this is undesirable it's one, another one of those let me teach you about something that's undesirable and you can do it if you want <laughs> we don't recommend it we kind of were doing that a lot last week it felt like maybe or the last time it felt, felt like um so yeah so um, I guess this was this seemed meaningful to me too. Like this idea of function factories is something we're going to care about a lot more. Um, so, but anyway, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so this this person actually went through and did a bunch of um, examples with this, right? So, um, I actually, I, I, I th- maybe this one actually went, was from the book or. Um, wrong about this um oh. actually let me just show it in these notes because that way I, I mean you know i already i already sent this to you but okay yeah so imagine we have we we, we have this um in the in the global environment we've, we've set x to be zero and now we're creating 
this new function called f where in that new environment we're setting um x to be two so now we have right, right off the bat we have a conflict right i mean between you know the sort of global environment and then the, within the functional environment and then we have x um super assigned to be one and so if we do that um we run that function we get two because within the the the, the, the functional environment that's what x is right that's the name in the binding right there um but if we just rate we just say hey um show me x it's not zero right it's one because and we and, and by the way this this it um i'm assuming like if we run this function over and over again every if we like you know in between running this function we keep reassigning a different value for x x will always end up being one after we run the function yes and that would be in the global environment as opposed to the the functions environment right um so yeah so th this was i thought was a cool thing note that the environment is local but super never creates a variable so it modifies the global x not the local x and that's that's actually super helpful so this this is the the global x and this is the local x or the functional x or whatever so um I thought this was really cool too, right? Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know who I, I got. I, I really should go back in and look at who wrote all this stuff, but it's really cool. So now we've got zero again, right? Now the function is okay. So this is really cool, right? So now we're just reassigning the local x or the global x to itself, right? So that would mean you know, we run the function once. Um, but to start with, x should just be zero, right? Because we've, we've assigned it up here. Now we're we're doing this global or the super assignment, and now we're saying, hey, at the global level, at the zero x equals zero level, take whatever we got and add one to it, and then you know return x. So if we just run the function once, we get zero. But now what's cool is when we go back to x, we've changed it because the super assignment has refed this, um, and then if we run the function again. It's now one as opposed to zero, right? Because X, the global X keeps changing. We keep adding one and, and everything starts from that global X. So does that make sense? Why this, this works, right? So um, I, I did it in my code, but it's basically just the same thing. Like, right, so it's like, okay, the first time we run the function, the function results in a zero and X equals one. Next time this function equals one, X equals two, two, three, you get the point, right? So this that's really interesting. I guess um, to use our kind of standard refrain, like why would when would we want to do that? When would we want to create like a, you know um, a super assignment and say a function or um, a project that we're doing? I don't know. I'm still well. You know, I'll tell you when I've used it is whenever I like got some like repetitive code. I'm like, oh, I can just like abstract that into a function. Just call that function twice, but the code actually does things to global variables. I'm like, well, I don't want to put all those in as arguments. So I'll just use that super sign to, to, to capture that same thing over and over again, right? So that's in, in a function, right? That's when, I, yeah. when I'm trying to like not repeat myself, you know, the DRY, don't repeat yourself principle drive. Right. Um, I often, in R, I find like, oh, I need to be able to modify the global variables like I did in, this, in the straight script, but now it's inside of a function. I, I mean, I don't want to pass it in because it's not necessary here for what I'm doing. I probably write some really strange R code, but I, I find myself doing that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I um... refactoring. That's what I'm trying to think. I use it when I'm yeah. refactoring things sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like you know, you're trying to do like a bunch of different analysis, and you're trying to create a bunch of different output. Whether yeah, exactly. Model results. So yeah, you think about one factor like changes a bunch of stuff within the function, but then you want to be like, listen. I don't just want the the values that are generated from this function run to be useful within this environment. I want it to be available to future other functions that may use the output of this in the global environment. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's Maybe. the kind of thing. Yeah, and actually, now the more that I'm thinking about it, I've probably done a bunch of things with a single assignment or the usual assignment that really effed me up <laughs> in, in hindsight because I should have probably done that super assignment. Which is interesting. I hadn't really thought about that until now. So anyway, yeah. 
more on super assignment as we move into this. So um, I already kind of showed this, but like, you know, we can create an environment just with like number and parent and like, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's fine. I guess. I mean, obviously these are trivial assignments. I mean, I'm assuming like a more, you know, sort of non-trivial one would be like um, X equals, and then there's, you know, we, we have some procedure for like loading a data frame or, or some larger, more robust source of data. Um, but in this case, we're just having these singular numbers with names. Um, but they authors talk about, you know, two ways of adding binding. So um, env underscore poke, which is just allows you to specify what the existing data set is, what's the new name that you want to add, and what's the new. Um, actually, let me make sure I do this right. So if I. Um, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, um, I know what I forgot. Sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, sorry. I, um, I want, what, did I, what am I forgetting here? Like, um, trying to to show all of the info oh, um yeah i don't i don't even want to show the env print i want to um yeah i mean i guess one, one of the things they they do is they show like okay i guess i was just trying to like i guess i can do that yes yeah. so let me just show this then Sorry. Um, so yeah, so if I were to start with oh, with this, okay. So that's the start and so now if I run this and I run this again, okay, yeah. So at least we know we've added this. Um, I guess the only difference is between the poke and the, the bind is you can do multiple pairings. I couldn't really figure out like what the advantage of doing the poke versus the um the bind was. I don't know if anyone else had that feeling because well the the thing you'd use poke for is if you had the name of the variable in a string somewhere, right? So I don't know you, if bind. Well, sorry, I, I didn't understand what you said. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, if, if you had the name of the variable in another variable, right? Like oh, the variable to bind equals quote a, then I could go. I could poke with with it like that, right? Because I can pass a string in. So you're saying like, this, have like a this, list this could be like a dynamic, names. this could be a variable name that we're passing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can't, and you're saying we can't do that. This you could you couldn't pass a variable. You could, but you'd probably have to do some kind of quoting thing, which I don't really know how to do, but <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's actually a really great point. I hadn't even thought yeah. about that. So um oh, and then another thing that seems relevant um from this part of the chapter was, you know, so unlike so you know, one of the things that we there's a common theme in this chapter is like, you know, how are the, how are environments and lists similar and how are they different? So, um, so in a list, if you set an element to null, that, I think we talked about that, right? That actually el eliminates that element from the list, um, but it doesn't um, do that for environments. So if you want to, um, um, you know, to remove, you know, part of, you know, an element in um, an existing environment, you would use env unbind. And then, yeah, here's actually the, the parts where I really struggled. Um, so, so this idea of lazy evaluation and also recursion versus like looping, right? So let's start with this. Okay, so the authors talk about sort of this idea of env bind lazy, creating delayed bindings, which um, I guess that means like a couple, it could mean like you only, it only runs once, right? The functions and then it's, it doesn't do it again, I guess. Um, and then there's other ones where it's um, recomputed every time. And so I guess for me, yeah, this, this example was, was kind of helpful, I guess. Um, so they're, so in delayed bindings, they're evaluated the first time they're accessed by the scenes, delayed promises. 
So behave the same way. I'm not really sure what the promises parts means, right? So does it mean like, okay, so the, 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 the results of the function running are saved for later? Because what it looks like here is, okay, so we're, we're, we're saying um, calculate, sys uh, dot sleep means like, um, I forget what that does. It's it's like um, whatever. So it doesn't even matter, I guess. But the point is, is we run this function the first time on on the value of one, and it runs the first time. But then we try to run it again, it doesn't. So that's is that the lazy part that it doesn't happen the second time around? No, no, so, it does happen. It just it it evaluates it the first time. So a side effect of evaluating is that cis sleep thing happening, right? Mm -hmm. The second time it the second time it remembers what it got the first time, which was just the number one. It just returns that number one. It doesn't do the side effecting. It already evaluated it. So the lazy disk means it's going to evaluate it when you need it. And then once you do evaluate it the first time, it'll remember it so it doesn't reevaluate it every single time. You know right? what bugs me is it, it, the fact that they call it delayed bindings because it's like you're not delaying like re re remembering what the values is. You're actually like it's it, it's actually binding like it to a promise. Yeah. It's but, well, yeah. It's like it's more like saved binding than delayed binding. That's probably what bugs me about it. It's nothing lazy about it. If anything, it's sort of like okay, you you do it once and then you don't have to do it again. Maybe that's yeah. Maybe I'm maybe it's just me being like you know fussy about language, but I don't know. Um, yeah. What does it actually say in the documentation? What's that? I was delayed. just looking. At, uh, yeah, they call it delayed as well. I mean, delayed. there's a, actually it's a base R thing called delay to sign. So yeah, you know. <laughs> I guess we're, we're stuck with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's um I would I mean to me it feels like more like non-repeated bindings instead of a delayed bindings. If I I'm just just I'm just saying like from a language perspective, because it's like that's what we're doing. Aren't we like assigning something that and we're just saving it for the second time around? I mean, we're you know, for for future, you know, runs anyway. Well, I mean, if you did a normal if you go scroll up a little bit, if you just did environment bind, that same thing, the minute you ran it, um, the minute you ran environment bind with that expression, it would really do that system sleep thing. And you'd never even know about it because it would happen behind the scenes. So the next thing we called it, there'd be no delay, right? Mm -hmm. The delay coming from the sleep. What sleep does is just pauses the execution for one second, I guess, right? Right. Or one millisecond. I don't know what the units are here, but for one millisecond usually, but um, Whereas the, and so that actually doesn't get executed until you first time you act, try to access the variable with the mm -hmm. lazy evaluation. Whereas with the direct bind, it'll just evaluate it right away. You probably won't ever even notice it happen, right? Here's another question. What's with the curly brackets? That's, well, that's, just a, that's just a block. You can put blocks anywhere, right? So if you have a block of code, do you want to have several things happen in, right? Oh, okay. Use like when a for loop you use a block uh, curly brackets. It's the same exact curly brackets actually. It's not mm. part of the for syntax. It's part of the block syntax. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, well, I've never I've never heard of block syntax before. In, in well, I, I did, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it's called a block in in other languages. It's called a block in R. I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not. I, yeah. It probably is. I've just never seen that. Like, well, when when Ryan when when you mentioned that, you have never seen that before. I was like. I'm glad I'm not the only so one, you, that's for sure. But you have seen that when you define a function, right? You use the little curly braces. And when you do a for loop, you use the curly braces if. Yeah, that's right? true. That's true. No, I um those things aren't part of the syntax of if, if it's just if statement. But when you have multiple statements, you've got to group them into a block and use curly braces. You know, maybe, the maybe, same thing. maybe you know what you know what the problem is, is is Ron is like I really don't understand what the heck this syslip thing does. So okay, so it's just okay, so it's just yeah. the time interval. Oh, is it milliseconds. It usually is milliseconds, I think. Yeah, it just pauses nope. it for a second. Oh, it does say seconds. seconds. Okay, seconds. Right. When I say usually because it's it's a system, you know, it's a C library called two, right? Called sleep, and that's usually in milliseconds. But seconds okay. is easier to notice. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, like, okay, so then that's a good question. So if you did like an environment bind, that same exact thing right there, environment bind, current environment, blah blah, blah but without the lazy part, and put like one second you probably notice a slight delay right when you execute it because it's going to do that immediately yeah that thing right there so now do it again we take away the word the underscore lazy part nope well i guess oh yeah sorry sorry sorry. you're right you're right you're right, you're right. okay hold on sorry i, I got it 
I don't do a lot of I'm like I'm kind of like anti console. I don't know. Like I like I like having things in like scripting. Oh yeah, uh, me too. Now see, look at one second later, now it's oh, back. So it did oh. it right away because it didn't do it lazily, it immediately evaluated that thing and binded it to the B. Okay. Uh, okay, I see. Man, this stuff is tough. <laughs> it's cool though. All right. Well, um, okay. Well, let me. Um, I'm doing okay on time. So, um, all right. Well, that that that, that makes sense. So, you know, I mean, I can see now a little bit more of it's it's um it's more about I guess we like retain bindings um, than but then sometimes we want to. Uh -huh. They, yeah. In our in the advanced art book, they don't call it a block. They call it a compound statement with the curly bracket. That's compound what that does. Compound statement. statement, which is actually a little easier to understand what that means. <laughs> yeah. Compound statement. Okay, so then recursive functions. Um, if you want to operate on every ancestor of an, um, it's it's convenient to write a recursive function. Um, he does he does mention something about you using a loop instead of recursion. Um, so let's um, let's just focus on this. And so, once again, I'm I'm taking this straight from the book. Um, you know, this idea of this where function, right? So where the two arguments are um, name, and then you know the caller, um, but whatever the, the the working environment that we're we're working with right now. So um, so if okay, so. An empty environment is like the, that's the end of the road for everything, right? And so, if um, the, the current, I guess, I, I guess what I don't really understand. Okay, so, um, so we're saying if the current environment that you're in is an empty one, you're not, you, you can't find the dang thing because it's, it's, there's nothing there, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the base. They talk about having a base case, a success case, and a recursive case in the book, right? So the base case is is if your current environment, if you're whatever you know, working environment or current environment, however you talk about it, is identical to an empty environment, which is the end of the road for environments, right? There's nothing there. Then you just send back a message that says, "Hey, I can't find your thing," blah blah blah, right? Um, if so this, this env underscore has is just that you know sort of, sort of returns a logical of you know if we find the thing that we're looking for it'll tell us what the name of that is and then the last one is because of this recursive case where the name so i guess what, what you're saying here is um re just return the name of the parent environment is that what, basically is that, is that you all see um well no it's calling it's calling the same function it's it's calling itself right recursing on itself it's calling the same function where so it's just say okay i can't find it in the current environment uh, we're not in the empty environment it's not in our current environment what i'm going to do instead is i'll call my I'll, you know what i need i need to find out whether it's in the parent environment oh i know i have a function that does that it's a function i'm defining right now it's called where where yeah. name environment in the parent so that's the recursive right. nature right i just was going to see Oh, okay. Um, so you can't like so. So if I, if I were to run this function, um, oh, never mind. Because I'm, I'm running, I'm doing that on a function. So I would need. Actually, let me do this. Hold on. Um, so recursion is just like iteration, right? But it's iteration with it, like, well, you said recursing back on itself, right? Is yeah. That the way I understand it. Right. So. Um, yeah, by the way, another yeah, thing. This is exactly. Yeah. Because remember, the name of the function is bound into the current environment, which is sort of the function, well, in its own definition, it's aware of its own self in some sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, and anyway, they also, another thing he, they, he does is is they create like, that's like a template for how you would do this if, you know, if you wanted to like yeah. extract out this. Okay. So um, this is far. There's an exercise that, you'll, that, has, that has you doing that. As well. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so uh, I want to take these one at a time. Um, and then some of these are like you know probably easy, but I figured we'd talk about them. 
just to and by the way another thing i, I should say i'm i'm well i don't know if you can see this but um i am extra prepared I, I bought online the um the the it's like the, you know the kid who buys like the cheat sheets or the the, the um the, the answer thing so y'all I'm, I'm 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 bringing the thunder over here with my with my uh solutions this which actually is written by uh, hadley and i guess some collaborators but um so anyway amazon comes through so what, what, what just without looking at anything can anyone give me um, some ways in which environments differ from lists let's let's um Well, the biggest one I always think of is the reference semantics, right? So that in the, when you that is you change a uh, um, a binding, it doesn't create a copy; it actually changes it. Right. Reference because semantics, indeed. Yes, that's the first thing in in the um, the cheat sheet. Uh, the other thing is parents. Parents. Until the empty environment, which I was interesting to me, um, mainly because that's really important when you start talking about. Uh, the search path and the search path becomes especially important when you're like when you're developing packages because right like that is a very important component and that's that's built on the foundation of environments yeah yeah um this was actually interesting i don't, um, I don't know if anyone thought about this but contents of an environment must have unique names so that i'm assuming that means that it's possible within a list to have like non-unique names in some of the elements i i haven't i couldn't think of an example of that but um also the contents of an environment are not ordered right so lists are you know um, ordered by definition right i think um yeah but yeah you can that's weird but how do you get the two pieces back out then <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. That's well. I mean, they're indexed. They have an index, though, right? Oh, you could that's you can index them out. Yeah. So it's, a, so it's they, another one of those. You can do this, guys, but it's probably not a great idea. But here you go. Let me teach you more about how you can do this crazy thing that you probably shouldn't do, but it's interesting. Yeah. So anyway, what see, what right. what happens? What happens if you try and reference it? So if you have two, of, and I'm, this is going back to lists, but like if you have two lists that are named the same. What happens when you do subsetting of that? Does it? Now you got me curious. In my case, it gave the first one. I don't know. I just tested that. <laughs> I'll. I'll uh, I. That's an interesting. Um, yeah. It's probably I, don't, I don't know if that's a rule or just some other weird coincidental thing having to do with addresses or something. Who knows? Yeah. Probably it would probably throw an error unless you use you know sort of um, uh, position. No, it doesn't. It gave me the first, I defined a list with two things named A and I asked her what's A and it gave me the first one. <laughs> didn't complain or anything. <laughs> so, okay, so it really is one of those, you can do this, but yeah. it's not a good idea deals. Oh so, yeah, definitely. It's a it's very much, a, can, yeah. Kind of um, all kinds of confusion at some point. Now, wait a minute, did I change A to something else? Why is it still this? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's why you can't do it with environments because that would be really bad. It's, it's actually really, I'm glad we went, what, kind of thought about that. Okay. Um, so environments can only can only be compared with identical, not with double equal sign, like you can in, in lists. And here's the last one was, which um, I didn't really get into it, but environments can contain themselves. So, like, right. yeah, um, if you remember from, um, let's see, oh, contain or reference themselves. Reference, yeah. So it's, well, it says contain themselves. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't um, that it's seems really, little... it's really a reference, right? But yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a language thing. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. And then, um, I, I wanted to get into a couple other. Oh, okay. Um, what is the parent of the global environment? I've already kind of. Um, yeah, empty environment, right? Yeah. No, wait, no, it's not. I keep no, it's not the empty environment. It's the package environment, right? It's whatever the package. most recently loaded package environment. Is that right? 
Yes, you're right. Sorry. Actually, I, yeah, I did read that. I just didn't put, I didn't talk about them in my in my notes. Um, yeah, so the only one that, that um, doesn't have a parent is an empty, and then you're right. So like whatever the last package is. Um, which is usually, which is usually base. Well, I yeah. shouldn't say base. I mean, because you could have many different packages. Base is the first one that gets loaded in, right? Well, I guess there's probably a way to modify that, but um, that's where we get into like special environments is that they have like the, like how right. it's. So, sorry, sorry, um, Ron, this is, this is your, your thing right here, right? So we loaded. There it is, yeah. And, and yeah. so basically for base, the parent for base is the empty environment. Yes. And then the global environment is the last thing it's, it's parent is, yeah. Whatever the last thing is, which by the way, um, I don't know if y'all have ever have dealt with this. Have, have y'all ever used the conflicted package before? I've heard of it. So have you ever dealt with like, okay, so you're doing stuff and, you know, and you've, you've loaded a bunch of packages and, you know, um, you're working with two packages that ha each have a fil uh, have a function called filter, right? And so how, how do you resolve that um, in your coding, just out of curiosity, like what would, what would your practice be? Well, I mean, you can use... Um... Well, I mean, you could use the double colon notation, right? Yep, you can, could do that. Yeah, you double colon. Um, yeah, uh, that's a, that's a good um, one. Except, uh, let me just show you um, what I do. And I don't know. Once again, this is like you know personal preference. There's something called conflicted, uh, which is a package. And what you do is, and this, I think this, this speaks to um, dealing with some of these, these sort of, um, you know, because typically what, what happens in R, at least from my experiences, is whatever the, the last package with that, that, that name that you load. So that I used, this is how I used to solve it like five years ago. I used to load the tidyverse last. That was my like workflow, which is in, totally insane in hindsight on my part. You know what I mean? Like the fact that I thought that was like sufficient. Cause you know, you know, you might, who knows, maybe like something changes and all of a sudden. So anyway, this, can you all see, so it basically conflict underscore pre, um, prefer. It says, okay, for the function here, I love the here package. I don't know if you, any of you use that. I'm a big fan of that. So, uh, and then filter, like there's a million packages with filter and select. So what I do is I say, hey, for the, the function select, you know, map that onto to, to D plier as a, a package, right? So um, it's, uh, you know, and by the way, like I tend to use the same dang thing for all of my projects. So, um, I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do it better, but um, anyway, I don't know if that matters to anybody, but like that kind of, that's pretty I cool. Reading, I was reading that stuff because yeah, typically whatever, if you have this, if you have a functional co conflict in your, you know, uh, and you're in your global environment, I would just go to whatever the, 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 the last um package to have you know whatever the thing is that you're trying to to do um anyway um yeah so how are you know we already i think we already talked about that um let me see actually there was like regarding like the search path and i was trying to find it while you were discussing yeah. i was trying to find it because i don't know if you're if, I'm, if anybody's familiar with tan but he's pretty Pretty active in in the in the Slack Ooh. group. He Tan. Mm -mm. Um, he hasn't been. Yeah. I haven't seen him post yeah. in a while, but um, he's still around. He he added a. I had a question one time with package development, and so like what I was trying to do was it was a it was like a workflow package that um, basically had some like SQL scripts inside of it. So basically, all you would do is is like you would run a function, and the function would call a SQL script. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, is that like, it would work when you were like developing the package locally, but then when you did, when you did like the actual install and attach, mm -hmm. it would, it wouldn't work. And it was because of the search path. And so there was a specific function that you had to use. And, and I, I can't remember what it was called. I was trying to find it, but it was like, it was a function that forced all of your functions to work within the package environment. 
so that when you called the specific like file path in the package, when it was loaded on the, on your computer, it would actually pull the SQL that you needed to do to run the query. And so, huh. yeah, it, it, it's, it's just interesting to kind of see how search path comes up again, because it's like, especially within package development, because you're trying to manage like your package environment but not only your package environment, but your package environment in regards to the global environment when somebody installs it and attaches it. And so um, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, um, well, I'm glad we kind of talked it through. I'm kind of glad we're going to, I'm going to, I want to spend, I want to like basically just, just for uh, clarity's sake. So, um, I mean, I, well, actually, I probably will just next week I'll, I'll, um, I'll probably just start with special environments and just, you know, just Makes touch sense. on these, the, these three, but yeah, I mean, there's not even a lot of like questions, right? There's not even a lot of like, um, um, exercises for this because well, their the exercises are all sprinkled throughout the chapter. Yeah. Remember that's how he does yeah. it in this book, which is kind of <laughs> throws you off, but yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pretty, pretty much what I got. So, um, but yeah, so let me, I'm just uh, just thinking about, you know, next week. So then uh, next week I would, uh, you know, probably take the first half to do this and then, oh yeah, try catch. Yeah, that's, um, I, I learned that one a long time ago. So yeah, hopefully I could get through um this yeah so the conditions um yeah this actually this actually does make sense to me and, and I, I would think if there's one thing actually i need out of this process is doing better with this because i you know i do a lot of functions where i don't put like you know i i i don't, I don't write a lot of functions period but i would say um to the degree that i do i'm not always writing like proper checks and you know like looking for errors or, or things or whatever so um Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, I'm actually kind of interested to to see what this uh, what this looks like. So, so that's all I got for now. Um, but yeah, if y'all have a chance, right. there's uh, this uh, this particular. Yeah, I mean, you probably all looked at this, but yeah, they, they have some great some great um, stuff that was really helpful. <laughs> Why should I care? Said right there. What did they, did they have a good opinion on that? <laughs> What's that? Was that rhetorical? So that oh, why should I even care said, about? Care? Yeah, yeah. Did they have an opinion? Yeah, hey, I mean, I like, was that like, rhetorical? <laughs> I mean, I feel, I feel like that's kind of what we've been saying this whole hour or off and on. So you know, but um, oh, I see. Well, yeah, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna become important with object-oriented programming with R six, S three, those. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, I don't know if you all saw this, but like apparently at um, our studio comp, I guess, or something like uh, Hadley. Yeah, R7, like, yeah. Did you see this? Yeah. I'm really interested in that because the R7, I thought it was going to be like R6 plus one, but it's not. It's like more like S3 plus four or something. Like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put it. I put it into the uh, into the the, the chat. Or the, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. So um, yeah. So next week will cool. just be maybe me and hopefully not just me and Colin, but uh, hopefully we'll get. Uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be here. I just don't know, and I just can't be sure enough to book myself or something. So yeah, no, hey, no worries. Hey, no worries. I might be on an airplane. <laughs> I might be on an airplane going like this with my laptop. We're okay. At least you're <laughs> not. Uh, at least you're not uh, on an airplane during Christmas, man. Yeah, uh, that's real. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I think what we'll do is we'll just wrap up the rest of environments, and then um, we'll kind of jump into conditions and see how far we can get with conditions, and then um, yeah, we might have to do a little bit of modifying in the schedule, which is which is fine. Um, yeah. I definitely need to probably reach out to to Robert to see Robert. if he's if he's still with us or um, what his plans are. Um, but if not, I can probably take functionals. That's not a big issue because yeah. I'm interested in functionals and, and function factories. So, but I'll reach out to him probably this week because and then we'll go from there. So yeah, cool.
All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. I really appreciate yeah, you yeah. taking on the Good environment job. chapter. And then, uh, and then, uh, Ron, if we, if, if, uh, if we get you next week, that'd be great. If not, you know, yeah. best wishes to you and, and, uh, hopefully everything works out. For All right. You and thanks, man. So. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk to you later. Happy week. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.